Hello and welcome to a new Google Sheets video in Practical Sheets. Today I'm going to do a conditional dropdown, a three list conditional dropdown using the new functionality of dropdowns in Google Sheets. Actually, it's the same. It's just changed the user interface and uh, let's say the concept behind it. But if you have already done this in 2022, in 2021, it should work the same. The nice thing is that I'm going to do it without any code. Normally we had to do it with code. I'm going to show you how to do it without code. And here I'm going to do it for two lists, two dependent lists, but we could do it for three, for four, for 10. I'm going to show you how it works. So here I go and say, for example, Apple, and here it will change to, I only have the, the app numbers and in the app numbers, I have the category pivot. Okay. But if I change, for example, to Google, then this will change to form sheets, Google Apps Script. And if I put Google Apps Script, then this will change to classes or simple triggers. So the categories we want. So three categories and it will change. It's much, much quicker than doing it with code, but it, it has some limitations that I will discuss in the video. Okay. So before starting, please consider subscribing to the channel or even better, go to the Patreon page where you can download all the templates and you can ask me anything and I will try to answer as quick as I can. Without further ado, let's continue with the video. I have organized my table or my categories in a table way. I think it's the best, but some of you may not. We could look at this in another video. We're going to work this with filters that if someone selects Google, then I'll filter only the things that say Google. And if someone uh, inside Google selects Sheets, I'm going to just filter the things that say sheets. Okay. But we are not going to do it with code. So for now, we're going to call this a data or, and here let's call this input. This is where I'm going to input the new things. For example, let's say student for the student. I'm going to select the suit, the tool for now. Let's do this for now. And finally we could say the category and we could go even further to the subcategory. So no, let's begin. The first dropdown is very easy. We'll just go on to data. There are various ways of doing it. Since 2023, we have this option that we just do right click and then go to insert link. Sorry, go to dropdown. Here in dropdown, I'm going to select dropdown from a range here in my right side panel. I'm going to give it a bit more of zoom and I'm going to select the range here in data. Let's start in A2 and go up to colon A. So I always go to the last row. Okay. And apply to range. It will be input, but actually I want it to apply to all of my row also, all of my columns. So here I'll also do colon A, enter. So I'll have this in, in all. Let's close this. There is one thing we don't like in this new implementation of Sheets and is this pencil that I can edit that I can go quickly to data validation rules and it's easy to damage the rules. But for now, there's nothing we can do about it. And the other thing a lot of you don't like is this chip type. So we can change it again. The good thing is that in this new application, this work as a rule. So I don't have to select all the range. I just need to select the rule. So if I go here to done and I close, but then I go again to my data validations, data, data validation. Then I found my, I find my rule here. My rule applies to the range. So it's, it's not longer a property of the range, but it's a rule that applies to this range. It's a subtle difference, but it's very important to understand it here. A nice thing is I could change the colors. As I already told you in another video, I could change Google. Maybe what is the Google's color? Maybe a red one, a blue one. I don't know. So I could change it. And also an office, I could do a red one and Apple, I could do a gray one, whatever. So we can change this here in advanced options and Instead of chip, we can say arrow. So it's easier or similar to before. The thing is that if you have put the colors, if you select Google, for example, it will put the color. So be careful with that. If not, then go here and just reset the colors. So you don't have this problem. Okay. Perfect. Now we have our first dropdown. We can go to the second one that this is where the fun comes in. So for the second one, we could do the same for now. So let's do another data validation. So here we can go to done and then add a new rule. It will be B2 up to B like the other one. 
and the criteria will be drop down from a range again. And for now, we could do, we could go here and start on B2, data B2 and go column B up to the last row. Here again, I could change colors if I want, but for now, I think the only thing I'm going to do is change this to arrow, done. Let's go to input and it works. But the thing I want is that it, this is conditional, that when I select this, the this, student, this uh, actually I, I made a mistake. Let's move all of these up here. This should be in the second column, not the first one. So I'm going to go to my rules. This is the nice thing about the rules is here the it, when I inserted a new column, the rule automatically expanded to the A, but I only want to leave it only to B. So let's hit enter, done, and that's it. So here I can write the name of my student or the email or whatever. So this, the thing I want to do is that when I select Google, this option is not all of the options, but only the options that pertain Google, that are related to Google. In this case, sheets and forms, that's it. So how do we do this? There are many ways of doing this. Code is a nice way of doing this, but here we're going to try to do it without code. I've already done it before, so but the, the good thing is that, the nice thing is that I did it before they changed this new way of doing validations. So, so this is a nice way of try all of us to get used to this new functionality or this revamped or updated uh, data validations. What I'm going to do is create a new sheet. It's going to be called conditional drop down. Actually, to be CD, that's it. Conditional drop down. Not to make these names too long. What I'm going to do in this conditional drop down is I'm going to copy or to bring a copy of all of this column. So let's copy the the header and Going to do with this um, bracket, and then go to input and select this one, and go up to B, and close my bracket. Actually, I could begin in the first one with header and everything. So drag it up from B1. Let's delete this one, and here I will have everything. So when a new user selects Apple, then Apple will come in. Why I'm doing this? Because here I'm going to create the drop downs. How will I do it? I explained this better in my first video, but I tried to go a bit faster here. Let's start with this one, with this first one. Okay. When I click Google, I want to filter in this cell, I want to filter all of the categories, all of the tools that have Google, that are from Google, that in this column A are Google. So how do I do it? There are a couple of ways of doing it. We're going to do it with the filter function. That is easy. What are we going to filter? We're going to filter in data this column B. So I'm going to select all the column B. Comma. How do I want to filter them? I'm going to filter them with the column A. So I want you to bring me all the data in column B where column A equals Google. Let's close our quotation marks. Let's close our parentheses. And here I have sheets, forms, sheets, forms. Okay. If you want, we could close it in a unique. So I only bring sheets and forms and that's it. And if I had here, let's say, let's add a new one, Google. And here, this is Google Apps Script. And automatically will bring Google Apps Script. What is the problem? That this is in a vertical way and I don't have I don't have the space for this one and this one and this one and this one. I should have to do it by column and this would be a mess and we would we would never end. So the easiest way to do this that I've already explained to you is to wrap this up in a transpose function. This way we'll have it in the row much neater. So I could you I could do it for all of this. So if I drag this down this doesn't work. Why? Because I have this fixed with Google and actually I should, I should reference it with this A2. This way, if I drag this down, then here I have Microsoft Office and here I have what corresponds to Apple. And if I put Google again, and if I have another one here in my input, that is Google, that is Google. And if I go to my input and I select Google again, and I go to my conditional drop them. I have Google here. Well, I have actually 
Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to drag this down a couple of, of rows more. And if I select Google again here, if I go to my conditional drop downs, again I will have the list of the categories that correspond to Google. Okay, this is what I want. This is the first step that I want. What happens if I drag this down? No problem. This is just empty, so I won't have a problem. So now I'm going to drag this down up to my last row. Control Shift down two times. Control D. Okay. So this will work for all my all my rows. But I'm missing a thing because still I don't have this conditional working. So how do I do it? So you may think, okay, the easiest way would be to go to data, data validations. Let's change this here in C2, this new rule. It won't be from data B2B, but I'm going to change where my data range comes. And I'm going to put, I'm going to say that it comes from this CD sheet and I'm going to select these four rows. So this is the, the tip, one of the parts of, the, of this tip that you don't need to select a vertical list. You could select a horizontal list like this one. Let's hit OK. And let's click Done. OK, let's see what happens. Let's go to our input. And now you can see that I have sheets, forms, of script. So this Teams doesn't work, so let's select. And if I go down here, it still selects sheets, forms, Google Apps Suite. Why? This is the last part of this trick, is that if I go to my rule, I can see that here, if you know anything about absolute and relative ranges, you know that when I have this dollar sign before, it means that it's fixed. So what I need to do is to remove these dollar signs, click done, and then magic happens. Numbers and Google is forms. And if I select Apple again, then it's numbers again. And if I select office again, then is the the tool from office and let's say that i have a new office tool that is planner or whatever and automatically this should now include planner okay so the first part is easy and i think it works i've already mentioned some of the problems with this that if i for example insert the row then here i'm going to have a problem maybe this we can fix it with a code but the idea was to do this without a code so I need to think about it because this is the big problem about this. If I insert a row, everything is going to be a bit crazy. If I insert a row here, then everything moves one row up. So I will need to change it here. Okay. So this is the big problem. So if you think this is going to happen a lot that you're going to insert new rows, then I urge you, I believe it's a better solution for you to do it with code that we're going to do it in a new video. I've already done it, but not with this new rule functionality. So maybe I'll do it again so you can know. OK, but my the other thing I wanted to do today is that this also works for a third conditional dropdown. So what we are going to do is the same. We're just going to duplicate this and call this CD2 conditional dropdown 2 or second conditional dropdown, second conditional dropdown. This is the first. If you want, let's change this to first. That's second conditional drop. So this will be similar, but now I'm not going to bring this from B1B, but from C1C. Okay, now I want to, to bring the tools, not the, the suites. I don't want to bring Google, Microsoft, Apple, but the, the specific tools, sheets, Excel, numbers, sheet, whatever. So now this is damaged because the filter won't work. So now I need to do the filter. From C, I want to bring everything from data C, that is the function. Now I want to bring the functions. So I want to bring the functions where data in B, that is the tool, equals to A2. And now Control Shift down, Control D, and it should work. Okay, for sheets, these are the two I have. And for Excel, these are the two I have. And for numbers, these are the two I have. And we're going to do the same for our dropdown. Stand here, right click drop down this the range will be d2 up to d the criteria will be drop down from a range and the range will be in our second conditional drop down we will go cb2 up to 
actually we could go up to z2 if i want maybe it's better one thing for you to take into account even though here you don't have the dollar signs when you click done and let's go back to our rules here and you go back to the rule you see that it automatically puts the dollar sign so you need to come back delete it and we'll take advantage of this opportunity to remove the chip and now it'll work okay so this is very important you need to go back because by default when you hit done it will always put the the dollar sign because this is an exception to the rule normally when you do normal drop downs you always want it to have them fixed but in this specific case for us advanced users we would need this okay so now let's see if it works so if i have sheets this is functions and tools and if i have google apps script then i don't have anything for google apps script so let's change it here what categories can i have in google apps script let's say simple triggers and let's add a new one Mm, this could be um, classes. This is form up, uh, sheet up, spreadsheet up, etc. etc. So if I go here to input, now you can see that I have both. And you can go on and go on and go on if you want. It's very easy. So this is your homework. Do the third one. You, if you have access to the Patreon, then you'll have the template. If not, please, this is very easy. So I could I could share it with you. This doesn't have any code or anything, but I could share it with you if you want, so you can have the data and you could, I, I encourage you to try to do the third dropdown. It's the same, exactly the same. So you'll duplicate this sheet, change this for actually, I don't know why I left it here. Let's see, I don't, I don't know, oh, okay. So you, you change this from C to D and here you change this C for D and this B for C. And finally you go for, to input and you create the rule and the rule. You will call it from the third conditional dropdown and remember to remove the dollar sign. This is it. I hope it works. I hope it's useful for you. And if you have any other questions, again, I, I think the main question is what do we do when we insert a new row? So let me think about it. If there is a way that we don't have to use code, but I think that unfortunately We'll have to do it, but think about it. And if you have the solution, please, this is the idea that we help each other. Thank you so much. See you next time.